Hi there, everyone. Um, I just wanted to quickly share some thoughts with you guys, just something that's been on my heart. Obviously, somebody out there needs to hear this. Um, this video was not really planned, as you can see from when it is being posted. It is not being posted on my regular, you know, Tuesday, Thursday schedule, so, um, but I felt randomly led to share some thoughts with you guys, and I just wanted to talk about, um, you know, confession, the spiritual discipline of confession, and how our churches should be a safe place for that. Um, I think a lot of churches have kind of, re I don't want to say, yeah, kind of removed the whole confession aspect. Uh, some faiths, such as the Catholic faith, uh, have, you know, where you go in and you confess your sins to, like, the priest or whatever, and, um, you know, I'm not necessarily saying that that's a bad thing, like, if that's what you practice and that's what you feel comfortable with, like, all the power to you, but, um, the kind of confession I'm going to be talking about is going to be more to do with, um, not even so much confession of, like, individual acts, but just more so, like, struggles in your life. I think as Christians, we sometimes have the mentality that we have to kind of be perfect when we're at church, and we kind of put on this face. You know, I saw this thing on Facebook the other day, um, you know, oh, some of y'all are getting mad that you have to wear masks to church, but you've been, you know, you should be used to it by now, because you've been wearing one for years. And in one way, you look at that, and you're like, ooh, ouch, like, ah, that's, that's heavy stuff. But it's true. You know, so many of us Christians, we wear masks. And guys, this isn't me trying to judge anybody out there, because... I'm going to confess something to you right here online. I've been one of those people, and I probably sometimes still am. You know, there are times that I'll have a rough week, and honestly, I'm really not feeling it. But I'll put on that happy face when I'm at church. We all do it. Honestly, we all do it. And, um, not saying that, like, makes it right or anything. I'm just saying that we all have done it. And of all the places to, you know, confess our problems and be real with people, it should be church. Because church is not just a religious obligation. You know, um, a lot of church go goers out there will be very familiar with the term church family. Because oftentimes, when you're going to a church, you consider that church your family. You might even consider them just as much, if not more, family than your biological family. I know people, obviously, like, I'm not going to name names or anything, because, like, privacy on the internet, but I know people who have been basically, like, disowned by their family, or maybe they've had loved ones pass away, or their loved ones don't live very close to them, so the church basically is their only family. And, um... You know, in a biological family, well, or whatever family, but I'm just going to use biological family as an example. You know, your biological family, they see all the sides of you. They see your good side. They see your, I don't want to say bad side, but kind of like your not so great side. They see the reality, um, especially if they like live with you and they see you on a daily basis. They're going to see your behavior. They're going to see all those things. So if we can be real with our biological families, why can't we be real with our church families? And obviously we don't want to dwell in bad stuff. Um, like, we don't want to just dwell on, like, all of our problems. But in order to give them to the Lord... See, a lot of people will try to deny their problems, right? Because they're like, oh, you know what? We got to give our problems to the Lord, so I'm not even going to talk about my problems because I'm just going to give them to the Lord. And that is great. That's, you know, you need to give your problems to the Lord. But in order to give your problems to the Lord, you have to recognize that you have a problem in the first place. Um, I'm going to use an illustration that I've actually heard of before. See this pencil here? So let's just say I'm sitting across the room from you and you tell me to drop this pencil. And, and I say, you know, oh, I don't have a pencil. Well, obviously, I'm not going to drop the pencil if I'm claiming that I don't have a pencil to drop. 
But if somebody says, drop that pencil, I have to look and say, hey, I do have this pencil. Drop it. You have to recognize that you have a problem in order to give the problem to the Lord. So, you know, I think sometimes we as Christians give up on the discipline of confession because we're like, oh, you know, well, we don't need to tell other people our problems. We should just be giving them to the Lord. But in order to give them to the Lord, we have to recognize that we have them in the first place. So during this time of COVID-19, where we're not uh, physically gathering in large numbers and things like that, um, and if you are gathering with a smaller group, you know, we're still doing like physical distancing and all that fun stuff. Um, you know, I think it's really forcing us to look at our behavior, um, like our church behavior, I guess, like our church base, right? And once again, making another meme reference, um, I'm a young person, okay? You're watching a young person on a YouTube channel, there's gonna be meme references, okay? Um, but I saw this meme, um, and it was, you know, one of those things where it had the two pictures, right? And the one was like a hospital bed or something like that, or like a hospital, and the other was a church. And the caption said something along the lines of, like, I might be wording it kind of wrong, but it said something along the lines of, you know, you don't expect to see healthy people here, meaning like the hospital. So why would you expect to see perfect people here, meaning the church? You know, the church has often been referred to as like a spiritual hospital, right? It is meant for the spiritually sick. So why on earth are we trying to come in and act perfect and act like we don't have problems? Yeah, we're Christians, but we're also human like anybody else. We have life struggles. We have problems. And the safest place to bring those problems should be the church. And if it's not, I hate to be blunt, especially on the internet, but if your church is not a safe place, you have a problem and you might need to reevaluate your situation. Um, and I don't mean reevaluate as in like you have to jump ship to a different church right away or, you know, whatever. I mean, if that's what God calls you to do, have at her, but I'm just saying that if you if you at least don't feel like your church is a safe place for that, then some reevaluating needs to be done. And you need to be in prayer. You need to be in the word and seriously just asking God to give you guidance and wisdom and direction um as to how you're supposed to approach that. Um But so often, you know, we try to kind of put on that, like, church face. And as that meme said, right, like, you don't go to a hospital expecting to see healthy people. So why would you go to church and expect perfect people? And the way I see it is, you know, Jesus died on the cross for our sins, right? Jesus wouldn't have had to die on that cross if you didn't have sin. Because if we were perfect, Jesus wouldn't have anything to redeem us from. There would have been no reason for him to die on the cross. There would have been nothing to redeem us from. If we were perfect, we wouldn't need a savior. That's literally the whole point of the gospel, is that we are not perfect, that we are in need of a savior. Because we wouldn't need God, we wouldn't need Jesus... If everything was perfect. And I think a lot of people, uh, even the non-Christians, are recognizing that right now during this whole COVID-19 pandemic situation. That, you know, we really need to be calling upon the Lord. It's times like these that we learn that we can't depend on human resources alone. Because those can easily fade like that, as we have come to find out over the past few months. Um, and I know personally, like, basically all my summer plans are down the flusher. Um... I'm sure, like, everyone's is. I'm just referring to myself. Um, and so we can't rely on even good Christian things, like going to church. We've learned we can't even rely on that. So where does your faith lie? And once again, this isn't me trying to judge anybody. In fact, as I'm speaking this to you, I hear it being spoken to me. 
You know, this applies to me too. It's something I gotta work on, something we all gotta work on. But once again, the whole point of confession not being this humiliating, shameful thing. In fact, confession should help you get rid of shame. But by me confessing this to you guys on the internet, by challenging you guys, we can come together as a Christian online community and we can pray together. We can pray for each other and build each other up, keep each other encouraged, keep each other accountable. We don't have to be in it alone. You know, that's why God is with us. He gives us instruction in his word so we don't have to be alone. I've heard it said that, you know, that there's a difference between guilt and shame. I think a lot of times we we kind of smush those words together, guilt and shame. But guilt and shame are really two different things. Guilt is the feeling that you get when you do something blatantly wrong. And it's usually the signal to either not do said thing or to not continue doing said thing. For instance, um, if you're a child and you steal a cookie from a cookie jar, and you feel that kind of little butterfly feel in your stomach, it's because you know you're doing something wrong, and you shouldn't be doing it, or you shouldn't do it again if you've already done it, right? Where shame, and, and the thing is, guilt can actually be of God. That could be the Holy Spirit giving you discernment, saying, hey, you shouldn't do this, or you shouldn't say this, or don't continue living this way. Shame, on the other hand, is of the enemy. Because shame, I'm going to give you guys an example. I've, I've seen this before. Like, obviously, I'm not going to name names or anything. It's like online privacy. Um, and even if we weren't online, I, I just respect, you know, people's confidentiality and things. But I think of Christians who have, like, past addictions, whether that be alcohol, drugs, whatever. Insert whatever here. And they give that up. They come to the Lord. Now, it's been years down the road since they came to the Lord. 10, 20, 30 years, however long. And every so often, they kind of hear this voice being like, you know, oh, you're so, like, worthless because you, you did this. God will never love you because you did this. You, you screwed up way too much. God will, you're not good enough. So, guilt can be a good thing because, obviously, if you're doing something wrong, you should feel bad about it. You're doing something stupid. You should be feeling wrong about it. Shame, on the other hand, is when you've already dealt with that problem. You've already, you know, as I said, when Jesus died on the cross, he died so you didn't have to dwell on that anymore. So if you're still feeling that shame, that is not of God, that is of the enemy. You need to be, as I said, praying, be in the word, you know, asking God for guidance, helping Asking him to continue to help you to keep overcoming whatever issue that is, whether it be addiction, whether it be a relationship, whatever the problem may be. Um, you know, and church should be the place to get help for that. We are to be a community of believers, helping each other, keeping each other accountable, challenging each other, lifting each other up. Or you could use the word edifying, you know, which is the same thing as building each other up. We are to be a family in Christ. And just like your biological family, um, well, I would say don't, but unfortunately there are biological families that do the things I'm about to talk about. But an ideal family situation, um, trying to take into account everybody's background and stuff. But an ideal biological or adopted or whatever type of family you are, um, I keep using the word biological, but like even if you're adopted, hey, just as much family as anybody else. Um, so we'll just stick with the word family. Um, but you know, ideal family situation is that your family is going to be there for you in the bad times and the good times, or even in like a spousal situation, if you're married or in a relationship or whatever, that your partner is going to be there for you during the good times and bad times. They don't just like, oh, okay, you have like a little problem, okay, we're just going to like leave you over here, have fun. Church families are, or at least should be, the same way. And if your church family isn't going to stick by you through a hard time, once again, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but you might need to do some reevaluating because... Your church family needs to be there for you. That should be the safest place. 
to show your imperfections. That should be the safest place to confess whatever problems you're having. And once again, this isn't to be like, I'm not saying that you need to like, you know, I'm not saying you need to go up Sunday morning and like run up to the platform, like snatch the microphone from the worship pastor and get up there and be like, on Wednesday morning, I forgot to turn on my left turn signal as I was merging into the lane on Oak Road or whatever. Like, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that if you're struggling with something, whether that be, it could even be anxiety or depression. It could be maybe a habit that, that you want to give up. It could be, and the habit doesn't even have to be, I know like a lot of people use the reference of like alcohol and drugs, but like, and if that is like by all means, like get help, but people don't realize there are, there are a lot more bad habits and things that are not just alcohol and drug related. So whatever that habit is, if you have been convicted about that. You know, you shouldn't be going at it alone. That's the point of having a church family. Is you're supposed to be a community of believers. And once again, um, you'll notice that this video is not being posted on its regular scheduled date. In fact, it was filmed on Pentecost Sunday of all the days. <laughs> By the time you see it, it'll be later in the week. And you'll notice it's not posted on the typical Tuesday-Thursday schedule, like all my other videos. But I did feel randomly led to share this with you. And obviously, if I felt led to share it, somebody out there needs to hear it. Because God doesn't just place things on your heart for no reason. So, I believe that there's somebody or people out there that need to hear this. I don't know who it is, but whoever it is, just be encouraged in that. Um, and as I said, personally, I would recommend, um, if you're going to do a confession type thing, um, you know, maybe consult one or two people, people that you know you're going to be able to trust. I wouldn't suggest picking, like, the church gossip, because, you know, some stuff you want to keep relatively private. You don't maybe want, like, everybody knowing, especially if you're in, like, a really big church or something. Um, and not even just in church. I'm using church as an example, but I just mean your general Christian walk. Um, you know, talk to somebody that you know you can trust and that you know is not going to judge you. That's not going to come at you like, what? You did this stupid thing? Like, oh my goodness, like, that's so bad. That's, that's just, you know, obviously they're not going to condone what happened, but we'll be there to support you and help you. You know, um, there's a passage in the Bible, right, where, like, Jesus said to a person, like, I think, when he healed them or whatever, it was, go and sin no more, right? Like, Jesus wants us to come to him with our problems, to give our problems to him, so that we don't have to live in them anymore. We are to be new creations. We are to have an identity in Christ. So, I would just encourage you with that. If you would like prayer, if you need to talk about anything, feel free to private message the Heavenly Footsteps Ministries Facebook page. We'd love to connect with you. Um, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, or if you don't have social media, you can also email at heavenlyfootstepsministries at gmail.com. Um, if you're watching this from YouTube, the link to our Facebook page is in the description, so feel free to pop on over there, join our Facebook community, drop a like on the page. Um, and if you're watching from Facebook or YouTube, um, feel free to subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel. We'd love to have you join our YouTube community as well. So, I think I'm going to end it, end it off here. I think I've kind of made the point I was going to make. Um, but I would suggest that don't try to go at things alone, especially during this whole COVID-19 thing. You know, I know right now we're doing physical distancing, you know, but still try to connect with people on a digital basis. This isn't the time to isolate yourself. I mean, you might have to physically isolate yourself, but not socially. 
you know, even though you might not be able to actually physically get together with people depending on the restrictions in your state or province, um, or territory or region or whatever jurisdiction you're under, um, you know, still interact with people online if you can, because, you know, this is a time that even though we can't be physically together, we still need to come together as believers and as a community. And as I said, I really, I've been finding that this online ministry has been a lot more than just viewers on a page. I think it's really becoming an online Christian community. And I want it to not only keep being like that, but to become even more of a Christian community. But yeah, I'm going to end it off here. I think I've said what needs to be said. Um, thanks for watching this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Um, feel free to share it with your friends and family. Share it with somebody that, that you think might need to hear it. Um, you know, post it on your social media. Do what you gotta do. Um, honestly, we want the gospel message to keep getting to as many people as we can. Once again, if you have any questions, concerns, or if you need prayer, feel free to reach out to me at the email address below heavenlyfootstepsministries at gmail.com or you can private message me on the Heavenly Footsteps Ministries Facebook page. Love to connect with you, get in touch with you, and uh, pray with you over the internet if, if that's something that you're comfortable with that you want to do. So thanks again for watching. Uh, ha I hope you have a great rest of your day. And, um, you know, I've, he I've heard this saying a lot at church and I think it is so applicable. I mean, it's always applicable, but especially right now with, like, COVID-19. Go out and be the church. You know, so, because the church is more than just a building. We need to go out and be the church, especially right now when we can't meet in that building. It is so important for us to, right now to be that church. So, I'm going to end off that. Go out and be the church.